back to another session with two tankers. Today's video is sponsored by MakerMade, the manufacturer of the MakerMade M2 CNC system. So we've heard a lot of questions and we've had a lot of requests on our Facebook page in the Facebook forums asking that we do some kind of a video series that shows people or walks you through on how to properly calibrate the M2 in the Makerverse software. So today is a great day. We are going to kick that video series off. We're going to start today's video session with properly preparing to do a calibration with your M2 in Makerverse. There are a few steps you need to do before you do a calibration and it'll make future calibrations a lot easier. Subsequent videos after this will be videos dedicated to each of the tabs at the top of the Makerverse software in the calibration screen and we'll do multiple videos across that. So stay tuned. All right, folks, so let's start getting into this. Pre-calibration process. It's the most important step in your entire calibration process, but people really don't talk about it. I have seven specific steps that I like to do. First, I get my motor width, center of both shafts. I measure between them. That tells me what my motor width is. My motor height, which is the center of my motor shafts to the top of my spoil board right here. That gives me my motor height. Also, I need my spoil board width and my spoil board height. All four of those measurements are critical measurements that you'll need to enter into Makerverse. I get those measurements and I write them down on my spoil board or I make a note of them on my computer. Then I have three more specific steps that I like to perform before I even open up Makerverse in the calibration uh, page in there. First, I like to go ahead and measure and get the center of my top beam. I measure it on the front and the bottom. I mark it on the front and the bottom. Then I like to go ahead and measure and mark the center of my spoil board. Put in a set of crosshairs in there so I know exactly where to put the bit. And then my third step is I like to go ahead and go into Makerverse and move my sled over there to where that bit is right in that crosshairs. Then we're ready to go ahead and start a calibration process. All right, so first let's go ahead and talk about some tools. You're gonna to need a good tape measure. The tape measure should measure in millimeters and inches. I measure everything in millimeters to ensure I get the best accuracy possible. Also going to need a square. Then you're gonna also need a straight edge ruler with metric on it as well as inches. Again, measure in millimeters anytime you can. Then you're gonna also need a four foot level straight edge and you'll need two large spring clamps. All right, so let's get started taking the first measurement. The first measurement we'll take is our motor height. The motor height is the distance from the center of that motor sprocket to the top of the wasteboard measured at the 15 degree angle with the whole unit. Let me show you how I set that up. First things first, I'll take my four foot level and I'll lay it on top of my spoil board so it's nice and flat and I ensure that the four foot level sticks out farther than the motor shaft. Then I take a large spring clamp and I will clamp that whole thing in place to make sure it doesn't move. Alright, the next step is then to take your flat edge ruler and your last spring clamp and you want to take the edge of your, your ruler and put it right even with the edge of the center of the sprocket on the motor. So put it on there and clamp it down using your spring clamp. All right, and next I'll take my square. I will take the back of my square right here and line it up exactly with the back of my level that I have on my spoil board. Set it up flush and then I slide it over until it's touching my ruler and I look at the metric side again, we want to measure in millimeters, and I get exactly 509 millimeters. So the next important measurement that we're going to get is the distance from motor shaft to motor shaft. It's called motor width. You'll want to write this number down as well. So the motor width is the distance between the center of this shaft and the center of this shaft over here. You want to make sure that you get exactly center on each one 
and measure in millimeters. It can be kind of daunting measuring over a long distance, but I'll show you a little trick. So here's the little trick. First, take your tape measure and measure from the outside of the chain on this end all the way over to the outside of the chain on the other end. Then, subtract 16 millimeters. Why do you say 16 millimeters? Because from this edge of the chain to the very center of the sprocket right here is 8 millimeters. 8 millimeters subtracted on both ends is 16 millimeters overall. So, take your tape measure, measure from this edge of the chain over to the outside edge on that chain, and then subtract 16 millimeters, and that'll give you the exact number that you're looking for. All right, and now for the last two measurements, we need our spoil board, our deck. We need to know what those measurements are. This is literally the cut area for the M2. To do that, take your trusty tape measure with millimeters on it and measure from one side to the other and measure from top to bottom. And that'll give you your exact numbers you're looking for. Again, write the width number and the height number down. All right, so these next two steps in my pre-cal setup is to simply find the center of my top beam and find the exact center of my spoil board. So I measure the total width of my top beam, divide by two, and I go ahead and put a mark there, and I put a mark on the front and bottom as possible. Then I go ahead and measure and mark the exact center of my spoil board. Use a large T-square if possible, use a straight edge, but try to get it as accurate as possible. So you can do those two steps at the same time. All right, folks. So very, very important point right here. You need to make sure you listen real carefully. If this is the first time you've ever started your unit and you're getting ready to move it for the first time, you've just built it, you're getting ready to move it for the first time, make sure you click Reset Chains. Again, make sure you click Reset Chains before you start hitting any of the jog buttons. The reason for this is, is the sled will start to move on you in any direction and it will not stop. It's called a runaway sled. The system needs to have a start point, and by clicking Reset Chains, it sets that in the firmware. So again, before you jog your machine, if this is the first time you're running it, make sure you click Reset Chains. Very important. And finally, the last step in my pre-cal process is to move my sled to the center of the spoil board. First, we open our workspace, then we open the port, then we click reset and unlock to allow access to the jog buttons that move the sled around in Makerverse. I note the work position numbers and then I choose a distance from the drop down menu that I feel safe using. I usually stick with 10 to 50 millimeter steps to begin with. Then I start moving the sled until my bit is dead center on the crosshairs on my spoil board. Now to do this, I move at my 10 to 50 millimeter steps, then I lower it down to a one millimeter step to ensure that I get it exactly where it needs to be. And once I am done and happy with the sled location, I zero out my work home position for both my X and my Y axis. All right, folks, that's the end of our first video, preparation for calibration on the M2. Please help the channel out by using our affiliate code right here anytime you're purchasing anything from MakerMade. And as always, if you like our content and our videos, please click like and subscribe to keep the channel going. Have a good one. We'll see you on the next one.